guys, welcome to another episode of Tool of the Week. Today we're going to take a look at the fish shell. Fish shell is basically a really awesome um, interactive shell that you can use as an alternative to bash. So the audience for this video is basically um, people who are comfortable with using the command line. Let's quickly go over what we'll cover. Um, we'll cover installing, launching and exiting. Um, we'll cover a few features that Fish Shell offers and why you should use it. So one of those features is the awesome real-time suggestions that it gives you, um, the tab completion, and the syntax highlighting. And we'll end by uh, making a note about how Fish is not POSEX compliant. Okay, so there are two options to installing the Fish Shell. The first and the easier one is to install it using your package manager. So for example, for Ubuntu, you just add the uh, fish repository and then you update and then you run sudo apt-get install fish. This will be similar um, regardless of what package manager that you're using. And if you can't use your package manager, you can install it from source. This is also very easy because fish has minimal dependencies. So just go to their website, download the source, unzip it, and then cd into the unzipped source folder and do a traditional cmake build. So just run cmake in the uh, source folder, then make, and then sudo make install. And that's it. Okay, so what I have here is just a terminal running bash. To enter the fish shell, just go ahead and type in fish. Now you're at the fish shell, because this is the fish prompt. To exit back into bash, just go ahead and type in exit. So let's go ahead and go back into Fish. Okay, so the first amazing feature that Fish offers you is the real-time suggestions. So let me just type in GR. So you'll notice that in light gray text, it gives me some real-time suggestion. This is based on my history. So at some point, I must have typed in this whole command. Now, furthermore, it will also read the man pages. So if I type in grep, the grep command, and then I type in one dash, um, well, let's type in another dash. You'll notice that what it does after I type in these two dashes is it parses the man page of the command. So it parses the man page of grep, and it's now suggest, uh, suggesting in real time an option. So it's getting this from the man page. If I type in B, it's suggesting a different option. That's really, really cool. The next amazing feature that the fish shell offers you is tab completion. So if I just type in GR, again, I'm getting the real-time auto completion in light gray text. But if I go ahead and press tab, it's going to show me all the commands that match GR. You can navigate this list of commands by using the up and down arrow keys. So I'm pressing down. You can keep going down to show the full list of suggestions. And then when you're ready to select one, just go ahead and press enter. You can also tab complete options. So if I just type in a dash and then press tab, it's showing me options. Again, navigate using the up and down arrow keys. When you're ready to select one, press enter. Furthermore, you can auto complete paths. So let's do CD and then um, let's do home, Abdullah and then press tab and it's showing me all the folders here that I can go through. So again, navigate using the up and down arrow keys and then when you right, when you want to select one, press enter. So for the tab completion, you can tab complete the command, you can tab complete the options and you can tab complete paths. The next really awesome feature that Fish offers you is syntax highlighting. So you'll notice that when I type in GR, for now go ahead and ignore the light gray real-time suggestion text. You notice that GR is highlighted in red. That means that there is no GR command. More specifically, um, Fish is going through your path environment variable and searching for an executable named GR. It's not able to find one, um, so it highlights it in red. Um, if I go ahead and type in grep, you'll notice that it goes into dark blue, which means that the command um, it, it was successfully found in your path environment variable. You'll notice that everything else is highlighted in light blue. So the valid command is highlighted in 
dark blue, the uh, invalid command was red, remember? The valid command is dark blue, and options to that command are in light blue. Now for the cd command, it also will highlight red invalid paths. So let's say I go to blah 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 blah, that doesn't exist, so it highlights it in red. If I type in a path that exists, such as home, highlights it in light blue. And again, the real-time suggestions are, high, are in uh, light gray. So red is bad, um, dark blue is a valid command name, light blue is uh, basically options, and, and for the cd command, option, uh, for the cd command, um, the, uh, the argument is of course a path, and if that path is invalid, it will be highlighted in red, for example. These are all really, really useful features. And you should note that you get all of these um, immediately as soon as you install it, so you don't have to configure anything, which is one of the main reasons why I really, really love this shell. And that's it. This is a very small tool. Um, now it has more, but these are really the only features that I use it for. One note that I should make is that Fish is not POSEX compliant. Um, for the most part, it has the same syntax as POSEX shells, so as bash and stuff, um, but it does differ. For example, the if statement in um, Fish is a little different than the if statement in bash. So for that reason, you can't just feed um, Fish uh, all bash syntax, right? Now what you can do is you can, put, you can still put all of your bash commands in a file and as long as you have a shebang at the top of that file that says, um, you know, bin bash, that's fine because fish will still run bash when, when you ask it to run that file. So let me show you real quick. If I have a file here, right, let's get rid of this. Um, at the very top, I have bin bash, and I have bash commands here, and bash if statements, etc. I can run this file on fish because fish is just going to use bash to run it. But if I didn't have this, right, now I try to run this file in fish, it wouldn't work because here I have a bash if statement apparently. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, summarize what we learned here and finish this up. So to install the fish shell, um, the easiest option is to use your package manager. Um, so just run these commands, for example, in Ubuntu. Uh, or remember, you can build it from source, which was very easy. It's just a typical CMake build. Uh, to launch it, just type fish. To exit it, just type exit. Real-time suggestions was the first feature that we took a look at. That's based on your history. It's in light gray text. Um, and it, it's also command line option based. So remember, fish parses the man pages of the command that you're using, and it's offering you real-time suggestions and tab completion based on them. Alt right arrow to accept the next word of the real-time suggestion. Control F to accept all of the real-time suggestion. So tab completion was the second feature. Um, you can tab complete commands to see a list of available commands. You can tab complete options to see a list of available options. And again, this is because Fish parses the man page for the commands. You can tab complete paths um, to see a list of available paths. You can use the up and down arrow keys to navigate through the entries in the tab completion and when you're ready to select one just press enter. So syntax highlighting was the third feature um, for commands. It will be red if it's not found in your path environment variable and it will be dark blue if it's found. All arguments are in light blue. But for the cd command uh, the argument is going to be red if the path cannot be found. So summary, red, bad, blue, good. And light gray is a real-time suggestion. That's it for this short episode. Um, as usual, if you have any questions or feedback, um, I would really appreciate feedback on the pace and content of this series. Um, just go ahead and post them as a comment. I will have a text version of this tutorial in the comments as well as a reference um, covering what we learned so that you don't have to memorize anything here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.